गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर एलेवेंथ ऑफ जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री लेट सेशन विच कंट्री हैज रीच अ थ्री बिलियन डॉलर स्टैंड बाय अरेंजमेंट विथ इंटरनेशनल मॉनिटरी फंड सो आई एम एफ एंड द कंट्री पाकिस्तान हैव रीच अ स्टाफ लेवल एग्रीमेंट on this 3 billion dollars stand by arrangement and this arrangement provides temporary relief to the country pakistan because it grapples with a severe balance of payment crisis and declining foreign exchange reserves right so that's why this agreement was signed between imf and pakistan country also pakistan was in news few days back because the national assembly of pakistan has amended its election act to limit the disqualification of the lawmakers to 5 years with retrospective effect also this bill aims to empower the election commission of pakistan to announce the election dates unilaterally without consulting the president fine then apart from it which country's king recently apologized for his country's role in slavery and he asked for forgiveness during a historic speech so this is the king william alexander of the country netherlands recently he apologized for his country's role in slavery and asked for forgiveness during a historic speech at an event to commemorate the anniversary of the abolition of slavery in dutch colonies and for this purpose The government is establishing a 200 million euro fund for the initiatives that actually tackle the legacy of slavery in the Netherlands and its former colonies. Fine. So here, the King of Netherlands has apologized for the purpose of slavery. Then, apart from it, these days Uta Mountains were in news because of a process named as watermelon snow. here watermelon snow was observed that's why these uta mountains were in use and it is situated in usa also talking about usa don't forget that usa has recently announced in country renewable h15 visas for india what does it mean so it means that now the individuals do not need to travel abroad to renew their work visas okay so usa has approved these h1b visas for india can you tell me from among the four options which country has recently joined the shanghai cooperation organization please write your answer in the comment section if you remember the next question says which city is the host of the united nations high level political forum so united nations high level political forum is taking place in new york from 10th of july to 14th of july and the forum central theme revolves around accelerating the recovery from the covid-19 pandemic and the comprehensive implementation of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development at all levels okay only thing you have to remember is which city is the host of united nations high level political forum so that is new york Now, apart from it, which city has recently hosted the Startup Twenty Shikhar Summit? So, this summit is organized by the Startup Twenty Engagement Group under the India's G20 Presidency, and recently it concluded in Guru Gram. Fine. And don't forget that Saudi Arabia is the first country to endorse and support. the startup 20s call to allocate an ambitious amount of 1 trillion dollars per annum into the startup ecosystem by the end of 2030 fine so which city has hosted the startup 20 shikhar summit answer would be guru gram okay and the headquarters of international solar alliance also lie in the guru gram this public sector bank along with nesl has launched EBG means Electronic Bank Guarantee Services under the Project Wave. So, Indian Bank 
in partnership with National E-Governance Services Limited, has rolled out electronic bank guarantee services under the project WAVE. Also, Indian Bank has introduced a new facility under project WAVE to ensure fully end-to-end -end digitally pre-approved business loans, which is actually available to process a loan of 25 lakh rupees. Fine. So Indian Bank has launched this electronic bank guarantee services under project WAVE by collaborating with National E-Governance Services Limited. Now yesterday we have seen that the Federal Bank has recently appointed Mr. A.P. Hota as its new chairman. And Mr. A.P. Hota is former MD of National Payments Corporation of India. Okay. Then Tushar Mehta has been appointed as the Solicitor General of India. Okay. And here if you talk about the Indian Bank, it is a public sector bank that was formed in the year 1907 and headquarters of this bank lies in Chennai. Okay. The next question is, France has collaborated with which country to fast track transition to the clean energy? So France and UAE have joined the forces to expedite the transition to clean energy solutions. And both the countries are collaborating on the projects in different fields like hydrogen and nuclear energy. So a trilateral cooperation initiative was established earlier this year between which three countries? So it is France, UAE and India. Okay. So that's why France has collaborated with UAE to fast track the transition to clean energy. Also, if you remember the first ever India, France and UAE maritime partnership exercise took place in Gulf of Oman a few days back, right? And which country was the host for exercise Khan Quest? So this exercise was hosted by the country Mongolia, okay? Then which is the most expensive city in India as per the Mercer's cost of living report? This is Mumbai. Mumbai has been declared as the most expensive city of India. At second position, there was New Delhi and New Delhi was further followed with Bangalore at third position, right? Now, which state has stopped the CSE report on overall environment performance? This is Telangana and Telangana was ranked at first position for its progress in increasing their forest cover and municipal waste treatment, okay? Then which country is the host for SB58 conference? Answer would be Germany. And now you have to tell me which country was the host for 6th Indian Ocean Conference. Please write your answer in the comment section. The next question is, which union ministry launched the Bharat 6G Alliance? So Department of Telecommunication, which works under Ministry of Communication, launched the Bharat 6G Alliance and basic aim is to foster creativity and cooperation in the advancement of future wireless technology. And this Bharat 6G Alliance brings together a diverse coalition that comprises of the government entities, businesses from both the public and private sectors, educational institutions, research organizations and standardization bodies. Okay. So uh, Bharat 6G Alliance also it is known as B6GA is associated with Ministry of Communication. Then apart from it, which union ministry has recently launched the e mobile application? So basically Deen Dayal Antyoda Yojana National Rural Livelihood Mission has introduced the e mobile application, the aim of which is to enhance the marketing assistance for the products that are created by women who belong to self-help groups. And this application will contribute to the existing e-commerce into hours, which focuses on promoting the self-help group produced goods. Okay. And talking about this Deen Dayal Antyoda Yojana, it is a flagship scheme of Ministry of Rural Development. Then apart from it, National Anti-Doping Agency means NADA 
functions under which union ministry so it works under ministry of youth affairs and sports why this agency was in news because during the nada india sara do cooperation meet that was held in new delhi nada india and sara do which includes anti doping organizations from bangladesh bhutan maldives nepal and sri lanka signed a memorandum of understanding and the purpose of this mou is to enhance regional collaboration in the fields of anti doping within sports and don't forget that nada functions under the ministry of youth affairs and sports fine right? the next question is which organization released the report titled as trade in services for development report so this report was released recently by the world bank and the world trade organization and as per this report in india south africa and turkey the employment opportunities are directly associated with the cross border services exports that constitute over 10% of the total workforce in the services sector okay so what's inside the report is not at all important only thing you have to remember is this is a joint report of world trade organization and world bank okay now apart from it the world health organization has recently released a report the title of which is burden of disease that are attributable to unsafe drinking water sanitation and hygiene 2019 update and as per this report the lack of access to safe drinking water sanitation and proper hygiene has led to the unfortunate loss of 395000 lives among children under the age of 5 years fine only thing you have to remember is this burden of disease report has been released by which organization answer would be world health organization also recently scientists from bangladesh and mauritius have joined the indian research vessel named as sagar nidhi for a collaborative oceanic expedition that lasts approximately 35 days and this expedition is being organized by the indian national center for ocean information services which works under ministry of earth sciences okay you can be asked that the national center for ocean information services which was in news these days functions under which union ministry so answer would be ministry of earth sciences the next question is the bodo land territorial council is set to establish the pig schools in collaboration with which country so the bodo land territorial council is set to finalize an agreement with the danish government to establish india's inaugural pig schools and the authorities of btc have collaborated with the danish consortium of academic craftsmanship and an agricultural business academy based in denmark to establish these pig schools and the btc is governing a region of 8970 square kilometers in the state of assam that includes four districts that borders the country bhutan okay so the bodo land territorial council is establishing these pig schools in collaboration with the country denmark next question is which indian institution is working on the development of a secure signaling system for the indian railways by using the blockchain technology so currently it khadakpur is working on the development of a secure signaling system for the indian railways that utilizes the blockchain technology and this tamper proof system will incorporate advanced safety features and it serve as a complement to the existing data logger which is commonly known as black box that is actually used in rolling stock okay so it kharagpur is working on the development of a secure signaling system for the indian railways by using the blockchain technology then apart from it animal discoveries new species and new records 2023 is published by which institution So the Zoological Survey of India has published the faunal discoveries in a publication titled as Animal Discoveries and as per this publication 
India has expanded its faunal database by including 664 animal species between 2022 to 2023, which consists of 467 newly discovered species and 197 species recorded in India for the first time. Okay, so this report was published by Zoological Survey of India. Next question is recently which Indian naval vessel was handed over to Vietnam People's Navy? This is INS Kirpan, which is indigenously built Khukri class missile corvette and it will be handed over to Vietnam People's Navy. And the vessel commenced its final journey from Vishakhapatnam, which on arrival at Vietnam shall be handed over to Vietnam People's Navy. And this is the very first time that India has presented such a vessel to a friendly foreign country and it aligns with India's vision of global unity and regional security. Okay, you can be asked that INS Kirpan has been gifted to which country? Answer it be Vietnam. Fine. Also, don't forget that INS Mother has been decommissioned recently after providing 36 years of its service to the Indian Navy. Also, there is exercise named as uh, Samudra Shakti and this is the exercise between which two countries? India and Indonesia. Why it is important? Because in this exercise, INS Kavarati participated. Okay. So you can be asked that INS Kavarati, which was in news these days, has participated recently in which exercise? Answer would be Samudra Shakti. And not only this, Indian Navy has also conducted the sea trials of 6th Scorpion class submarine recently under Project 75, the name of which is INS Vakshir. Fine. And now the last question says, where is the International Seabed Authority headquartered? So International Seabed Authority is a Jamaica-based intergovernmental body of 167 member states and European Union that was established under the 1982 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. And this authority is making preparations to restart discussions that may potentially allow the mining activities in the international seabed, which is also known as deep sea mining. Okay, so for this purpose, this authority was in use and headquarters lies in the country Jamaica. Now here, if we talk about the important headquarters, the headquarters of United Nations lies in New York, then headquarters of UNICEF again lies in New York, then the headquarters of IMF and World Bank lies in Washington DC, right? The headquarters of different organization lies in Geneva, Switzerland, like for example, World Health Organization, then International Labour Organization, then International Committee of Red Cross, then after that World Trade Organization, World Meteorological Organization, World Intellectual Property Organization, then International Organization for Standardization, etc. Also, the headquarters of UNESCO lies in Paris, France. Paris has the headquarter of one more organization named as OECD, means Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Then the headquarter of UNIDO means United Nations Industrial Development Organization lies in Vienna, Austria. And also has the headquarter of International Atomic Energy Agency lies in Vienna. The headquarters of OPEC also lies in Vienna, full form is Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. And now you have to tell me the headquarters of NATO means North Atlantic Treaty Organization lies in which particular country. So please write your answer in the comment section. So these are the most important current affairs and the news from today. And now let's start with today's quiz. Here on the slide you can see five questions which have been taken from the past two three days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions and at the end of the lecture do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this Minuzhat Sana signing off.